Pastor Sean, thank you for having us in your church today. Oh, my pleasure. Um, what have the last couple of days been like for you? Probably like a big inhale, I guess. A little bit now today sort of feels like an exhale, just sort of taking that deep breath and, you know, just a lot of anticipation. What is, what is this last verse going to look like and, and stuff? And then what's the next step going to be? So just taking a big, big breath and wondering how the community is going to come together and so on. So a lot of unknowns again. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because the media kind of just, you know, jumps in and then we leave. Uh, but you've been here as a pastor, a shepherd for the past year. What do you say to, you know, your members of your congregation who are still grappling with the loss of a year ago? I mean, only 365 days ago, um, as they still process their faith and what happened? You know, well, we really haven't changed the message much. I, th I think, the, you know, there's really nothing new under the sun. So as we walk through scripture, it, it's the message is the same, you know, it's a message of hope and the gospel is, is, like Paul said, he was eager to come and preach the gospel even to his church and just to hear the good news of Jesus. And we need to be reminded of that oftentimes, right? That, you know, God does love us. He, he has paid for us and he's gonna walk with us and he's changing us and he's working in us and he brings hope and peace and all those things. So the message really hasn't changed in the last year. Um, it just has taken on a new, meaning for some folks, I think, and, yeah. and the power of the words that they probably knew and had heard before now resonate. Now you're left to, to wrestle with, am I going to take this? And am I going to, am I going to believe it and stand on it? And that's where faith becomes reality, you know? When you're talking to members who've lost a loved one in that bus crash and they would say, you know, but we say that we serve a good God. Why would he take such innocent lives? How do you respond to that? It's a much deeper, much more complex yeah. question. It's actually not a, not an answer many people want to hear either. I mean, we're 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 not God, number one, and we have we have to leave God in the place where He is, mm -hmm. um, and, and and stop trying to be God and say, declare what is right and what is wrong, for God to do. Now it's not fair. Mm -hmm. um, God is just. Um, sometimes what He does doesn't, in our perspective, is not fair. Mm -hmm. um, God's perspective is much bigger than ours. His ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts and, and so on. And God can and does do incredible things mm -hmm. that we would have never thought to ask or imagine. And so in some ways he's calling us to trust and walk with him in, yeah. in very dark times and unknown times. And so that's not to say that we will always even see in our lifetime <laughs> why or, or what what happened um, in some ways though we answer that question you know what what's gonna uh, what's gonna come of this um, or what good could ever come of this mm -hmm. we, we answer that question sometimes by the decisions that we make after that mm -hmm. you know are we going to get bitter or mad or angry or or lash out or do something negative or or are we going to act out and our faith and our belief and and then bring some good out of this too. I think we have a responsibility to play there too in how we respond to loss. Do you think um, Humboldt has healed yet? Where is Humboldt at in that stage of grieving and healing? I, I think people who are closely connected with it are, are probably, of course, different at different stages right. than other people who maybe it was just a hockey team. You know, so the, the depth of grief, even initially, was, was very different. There was a shock and there was a horror that goes along with it for everybody. I think some are progressing through it. And, and that's another part of grieving corporately that's so hard, mm. right? Because mm. um, some feel guilty for feeling like they've moved too fast. Right. Others feel guilty for feeling like they're moving too slow. And so this, this whole wrestling match of where should I be in grief is, it's not, there's no place you should be. Mm -hmm. It's just grief. And, and so that's the, that's the challenge of it. And so the community of Humboldt, I think is healing. You know, we're taking steps forward and we're, we're doing some of those things that we know need to be done, but are, are hard to do, you know, get back on the ice. Is that insensitive? Is that, you know, but it needs to happen, mm -hmm. you know, but for some of the families that hurts to see that, you know, you want the world to stop in, in a sense when you've lost somebody. You want the world to stop and notice and recognize and, and so to move on sometimes feels cold mm -hmm. and, 
but that has to happen. How can we continue to support Humboldt? Because the media cycle will keep going, people will move on, but I know we have viewers that will want to continue to pray for Humboldt, continue to support Humboldt. How could we do that actively? That's a good question. One of the things I think it's unique about Humboldt, a lot of people have this misconception that all the kids were from Humboldt, and they're not. Mm -hmm. That's a good um, point. The, the Humboldt and, and hockey in general um, affects communities all over the country. Mm. And so in, in some ways, the greatest way to support Humboldt is to support people that you're around. Mm. So people in St. Albert or in Calgary or whatever you are, um, Toronto, um, it's, in some ways, it's kind of like the early church. Mm -hmm. You know, you had one hub and then it went out from there. And yeah, it, it affects Humboldt, but it affected communities all over our country too. So be praying for those communities, um, but also be praying for your, your local people. There's local people that hurt. Um, your neighbors hurt, um, just like Humboldt hurts. Mm -hmm. And so in some ways, I hope this, the tragedy opens our eyes to the fact that, that pain and suffering is actually a universal thing. It's not mm -hmm. just constrained to Humboldt. And so Christians especially, yeah, pray for Humboldt, pray for our families, but, but look after the hurting people next to you, mm -hmm. <laughs> your neighbors and, and, and that too. Um, get involved with your hockey teams and get involved in your community so that when tragedy strikes, whether it be on a big scale or a small scale, um, we have Christian people in, in places to bring hope and peace and in their own community. And I think that's one of the ways that we should be praying is that the gospel would continue to go out into the communities. Well said, thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you.